It's official, guys. Malaysians are avid gamers and 85% of the Alps population engaging in gaming activities. Recent statistics from Bukit Aman's D11 reveal that cases of sexual exploitation via online games have almost tripled in recent times with predators grooming children for sexual exploitations in less than an hour. And cyberbullying has also become rampant in online gaming world with gamers as young as 13 targeted by online harassers. So without further ado, I'd like to welcome my guest today, who is a trained mechanical and systems engineer, has worked in over a decade in numerous multinational companies. He found his passion in training, coaching and personal development when he completed his certification as a Law of Attraction facilitator with Michael J. Lozier, a globally successful trainer and author of the international best-selling book, Law of Attraction, the science of attracting more of what you want and less of what you don't. He currently dedicates the majority of his work in conducting performance coaching. He's also the founder of the LOA Center and he's here today to share his opinion on the darker side of online gaming and cyberbullying. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mr. Siva Pragrasam Aramogam. How are you, sir? Good, sir. Vinod, how are you? I'm good. I'm good. Firstly, I want to talk about cyberbullying in gaming. So, how can cyberbullying manifest itself? What forms can it take in the world of online gaming? In many ways, uh, see, when we go into the gaming, I mean, I, I've gone into gaming, I never got addicted. Um, when you go into gaming, what basically happens is that you get drawn into because they have these points and friends and all that. If you really understand what's happening deep inside, is basically you have this um, dopamine addiction that's taking place, which is similar to drug addiction or cigarette or whatever. So it gets you the pull factor. And what you must understand is that the whole system in the IT, what it's done is that whenever you're looking at the screen, we are innocently looking at the screen, but at the back of the screen, you have coders and many, many psychologists who are also doing the analytics. Now, thanks to AI, it can be done faster. So what happens is that once you get drawn to it, that's it, you stay there. And that's where a lot of things happen. It'll start very innocent. You want to play the game. And then it can be sinister where you tend to steal money from parents. Because when we do uh, coaching, we do youth coaching and all that. This is rampant also because without the parents' knowledge, they're actually you know, trying to get their credit card uh, and, and using the card and getting into game. And you know once you're in that dopamine high, you want to do the next thing, next thing, next thing. And you get into you know, how to get more money from this way or that way because you want to fix that high. So is game good or bad? It is neither good nor bad. How are we using it? But of course, one thing that cannot be denied is that online gaming opens up a world to an individual wherever they are, right? You have, you have platforms like Discord and all this which can connect you to anyone anywhere in the world. So have you come across like a case study or, the, or an example of your in based experience of a child who has become a victim of cyberbullying and you know, what are the symptoms he, he showed and how it affected his own mental health, his or her mental health? I, I've heard this. Uh, I think there are basically a lot of stories if you go and hit in Google, you'll find a lot of stories coming up. Uh, this person, this boy is a brilliant student and he somehow got connected to the, in the social media thing and playing game and get connected. I don't know what app they used to get connected, but it was a social app. So what happened over there, slowly he befriended someone who started grooming him. And over there, what has happened is that slowly they started asking to expose himself. And it was basically for a very innocent reason. I just want to see how you look like. But he didn't know what was happening at the back of it. It's basically photos and videos are being recorded. So one day he got a message telling that I've got all these things. Can you transfer some money to me? Mm. Right? I think it happened in the US. And this guy was so, fr so depressed, can't even talk to the parents because the parents are good people. The parents don't know what's happening. All these things are happening under the water. Nobody knows. But he was becoming quiet. Parents never spoke this and that. Obviously, he found some money because he had to fix this guilt. Mm. Guilt and shame is a big thing. Again, it boils down to our hormonal level, you know, how we feel about that stress. So what he did was he got some money and then next thing he paid. And then obviously it doesn't stop there, right? Mm. You need to give me more money, more money, more money. Until he took his life, he just jumped out and he died. That's why be very, very righteous in whatever that you're doing, right? Because end of the day, if, if you're not righteous, you're doing certain things which is not right. It is all being recorded current big data, everything that we're telling, doing or telling is being recorded, so be very careful. But the kids don't know about all this stuff. So this also uh, goes in line with how long the brain takes to develop. 
Uh, science says the brain takes around 24 to 26 years to develop fully. The reason why we're able to have that kind of rational thinking is basically now we are more than 24 or 26. Brain is fully developed. The brain just don't develop just like that. Boom, the moment you're born. It takes time for it to develop from stem all the way to the neocortex. So if you don't understand that and you are giving the kids the, the what you call the avenue to play games at a young age, this and that, and they're not ready, and the person with a grown brain out there could be grooming them, having all sorts of conversation with them just to get them lured into this, like how this boy got lured. So like this, there's many, many, many stories like happening, right? The kid has committed suicide. The one that's actually facing the life sentence are the parents. Because the parents are thinking, hey man, I gave everything good kid. Why is this happening? Maybe we didn't raise him up well. Now whose fault is this? Is it the parents? Is it the social media? Or is it the kid? But whatever said and done, a life was lost. Human beings are built in a way whereby self-preservation is at the core of our psyche. I see today, despite the cyberbullying, despite the shouting and the aggression that comes out when these kids play games, uh, and I'm sure a lot of kids are facing cyberbullying, right? They still f stick, they, they still go back to that habit. Why do they go back to such an environment that is so hostile? And, and, and these are even kids who are teenagers. They, they should know better. Why do they keep going back? The environment supports the trigger in using all this. And who is supplying this environment of having the handphone nearby? All these triggers, which actually triggers your dopamine craving, where I want to use it. You can't just tell someone, no, cold turkey. I always joke with some of my parents, friends, I tell, have you seen someone coming out who's possessed where you're doing like exorcism you know they go like they're fine then they go ah like that so i said no try this go to your kid that you've already given the phone for the longest time or a tablet take it up and just pull it out and say i'm not going to give it anymore guess what happen? they'll become like Tantrum. emily rose yes emily rose yes, right yeah. it happens now why because so much of chemical has gone into each fiber of the body that this is craving, I want it, I want it more, I want it more. You can't, you can't just turn it. So what you need to do is that you need to slowly but surely change the environment so that they don't get this. That's why you don't give them the phone. So how do you communicate with them like that? Parents, do, nowadays what they say is that they talk to the kid like talking to an adult. So how can you talk to a kid in an adult level when the brain is not adult level? Mm -hmm. So how can you do adult rule with them? So we all need to relook at how things are and all that. We need to calibrate ourselves. Yes, okay, I, I need to understand the biology of this machine. This is how this machine works. So if the machine works like that, I need to do like that with that machine. But if you, are, if you think you are a machine that's fully grown and there's a tiny machine there, you think that's fully grown machine also mm. and you treat that as a fully grown machine, it's not going to work. That's why we have all this problem. So, I, I, are you somewhat saying that parents have dropped the ball in terms of cyber allowing cyberbullying to creep into the lives of their children? Of course. So, they are at mistake. Uh, from where they're getting the phone first, uh, normally, you know, just imagine this. Uh, I, we get parents coming to us and saying, my son is addicted to his phone. Then I'll normally, you know, casually go near them and say, slap the person who gave the phone to them. The phone is built with so many analytics and all that to pull you in. And why the billboards... People are not looking at the billboards most of the time because all the advertisements are in the phone. The phone is designed for you to crave. That's what's happening. So if, if we do all that, this is what you get. Okay. The result doesn't lie, right? But what created the result is something not many people are talking about because they're not taking responsibility. I think it is a gargantuan task for children, for parents now to say that, okay, my child should not engage in gaming, should not be in nope. that at yeah, this yeah. point. Uh, but in the short term, what should parents look out for in their kids to know that this child is currently un being bullied on in, in, uh, in his online game uh, experience on a daily basis? Yeah, it, it's ridiculous to tell no smartphone. Yeah, we have to coexist with technology. I am a fan of AI, Chat GPT. I use. So the thing is that we are human being, right? Have a conversation. Give them undivided attention. What kids need is not eight hours parenting. They need that five minutes, you sit with me, eyeball to eyeball, have a conversation. Now, back home, this is what we've been doing for the past 
uh, because I can't tell for the rest. But I can tell for myself. I, do I have issues? I have issues. Do I, my kids have issues? They have issues. But how do we go about it? Is basically we have this session that we sit down. We we call it happiness circle. In in that we'll celebrate. Plus we will talk about what I feel like expressing. So the moment I see my kid having some sort of you know dull, you know they're not talking to anyone. I said, okay, can we have a wiffle session? What what I feel like expressing. So if you don't know what's coming up, when you leave it too late, it'll fester up to other things. And majority of the time, in grooming, this is what happens. You don't know who's the other side befriending you, mm. right? They can tell so many good things. It has happened. Someone told me in in, in a meeting in a conference, uh, this girl was actually playing Roblox. You know, very good kid and all that stuff. Next thing, you know, went into the game because parents said you can play the game. It's it's a good game. You you are creative, but you don't know who's the other side having conversation. And there was a predator there grooming. You know, open your shirt, this, that, this kind of things. And then he was so kind to that girl, where the girl befriended him and became so close because the parents are not spending much time. So whenever I come back home, when the parents ask how is school, okay, and then go to the room and play the game, right? But over there, the connection is good because we're human being, right? We want to have that connection, deep meaning, which is something not happening now. I mean, recently an influencer died. I was talking to my IT guy. He he gave gave a very interesting remark. Thousands of people following her. No one came to help, and she has no one to talk to. And she died because mm. cyberbullying. Mm. And hundred ringgit is the fine. It happened recently, yeah, right? Yeah. So all these things. So we need to know that parents need to have the pulse. How the kids came here? The parents did something. The kids were given birth. So you need to know the pulse of your child. You need to have a conversation. Know what's happening. See the biology. Why they're not talking to me? Okay, maybe there's something going wrong. Sit down and have a conversation. How many people are doing that? Is this something that can be uh, can be done immediately, or should it be, or must it be cultivated from a young age? Because I would assume. That, you know, once a child becomes a teenager, I mean, I have young daughters, and already I'm struggling, you know, to to talk to them, you know, because they all have their own characters. But you know, at what age should you start this practice of talking to your children, and then to create that bond to avoid, I mean, to get to know when they are being bullied online and all that. Okay, first we need to understand this, right? Okay, let's talk about normal scenario. The kid is born. The first seven years is the hypnotic stage, where the kids are not. The the kids are actually in the they call it the alpha theta level. They actually sucking up things. Why they suck up all these things? These are all signs. They suck up because they want to get into their subconscious mind to live in this uh, environment so that they don't get outcasted. So they have to learn from the parents. So first seven years is very important because they have to program. So many parents don't understand. Right from the time they are conceived till seven, you need to be love, loving, kind, this and that. Spend time, put the red, you know, music in the whatever. Do all the things so that the kid learns because they they are learning from this. From then onwards, I'm talking about programming. After that, they use the seven years, and then they live their life. Mm. Mm. Just imagine mm. how important the seven years. So now let's say we have goofed up the seven years, lah. That's the question now. What do we do now? Still have a conversation. Nothing wrong. Have a conversation. Build the trust back. But if you all of us are basically, you know, we're busy in the grind. When will we have the time to have a conversation with our yeah, kids? Yeah. And we say our, our family is the most important thing. There was one uh, famous American uh, comedian who said, "If you don't take care of your ch- children when they are young, you will you will have to take care of them when they are older." Yeah. Yeah. Now. In terms of strategies for parents, what should they be doing in terms of online gaming and curtailing, uh, you know, the the potential harm or the potential threat of cyberbullying, uh, uh, sexual grooming that their kids may, yep. may See, face? The, the thing is that why they go into that is basically because of the choices, right? I choose to be that. You and I sitting here is basically you are a accumulation of a choice. I'm an accumulation of a choice that put me here, right? So the most important thing is that if the choices are very important, I'll share my story and this is what we teach, right? In choices, there are three parts: golden, grey, toxic choices. So I have a conversation with the kids. Like I give you, like when my our kids were growing up at that time, uh, they they're all like 27, 26 now, all working. 
But when they were young, they wanted a smartphone. So I had to have a conversation with them. Well, you want to have a smartphone? Why? Because uh, uh, they need to get these WhatsApp messages and blah, 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 blah. I said, okay, fine. Are you busy now? They said, yes. How many hours do you have? 24 hours. Great. Now, if let's say I give you this phone, is it a golden, gray or toxic choice? This is a golden choice because I can get information. I can work on it. Okay, good. If you get the phone, will you go to YouTube? Will you go to social media? They send it. Yeah, I will, I will, I will. How long would you spend some time there? Maybe another one hour, two hours? Okay, brilliant. When you get 26 hours in a day, let's have this conversation. Now, let's say if you keep doing this, how would your life be? They said, uh, not very exciting because I don't have the time. I can't finish my homework. So is it a golden gray or toxic choice now? It's a toxic choice. Okay, let's have a conversation later on. But the thing is that you must have conversation, right? And a lot of them don't know how to have the conversation. We have because we read. We experimented. It works. At the end of the day, we must give the children the, the ability to think. Not we decide everything and say, no, cannot, this and that. Allow them to rationalize, talk back. Now the information is rampant. So you need to be with your kid informed so that you can have a better conversation. Otherwise, they call you an idiot. Mm. You are a fool who is not uh, representing the current affairs. All right. So we need to up our game to know all these things. If you have to watch cartoon, watch cartoon with them. Mm. Be there. Play with them because their age is for playing. You can't be sitting somewhere and thinking that everything is fine. It doesn't work. Bracing up kids is not easy. So if we can do that, just imagine the conversation we need to have with these intelligent beings. So we need to respect them where they are and have this kind of conversation where wherever they are, have the conversation. Is is online gaming all the negatives that is out there? Uh-huh. And we're talking about sexual harassment, cyberbullying and all that that's happening. Is it still something that should be allowed? For instance, I give an example. Recently, China announced that they ble- they using facial recognition uh, software, they will be able to block kids from accessing online games on their phones after 10 p.m. Should we do the same? Should we be more restrictive uh, of the exposing our children to online gaming? Now, it's interesting you say that. I heard about this. If it's true, they should. I'll tell you why. Why there's another rule there, another rule here? I don't understand, right? They should. Because why? If, if China is doing well with that kind of strategy, we should adapt. Even U.S. is not doing that. It's, it's just, you know, TikTok. They do that. Mm. Gaming do that. Why? Because they want. They know the issue of it. Just imagine you have to go to sleep at 10 o'clock, but you're still playing game. What happens to your circadian clock? Mm. It's a problem. So we are a biology creature. So if they understand, why can't we understand? Mm. Why are we talking about issues that's whacking us? We know you're supposed to sleep at 10. Switch off everything. Sleep. Mm. Two hours before you sleep, read a book. Go, but it's boring, nobody listens to that. But again, if we don't do that, the body one day will make us to listen to it. it. We have to be depressed, we have to pay price to panic attacks, anxiety and all that stuff. So why are we following that then? If if we know it's not right, why China can do, why we can't do? I'm surprised. Mm. If it's a law that can be passed, I'll support, seriously. Mm. Why not? How do you tell a child, how do you program a child to be aware of uh, when they are being groomed, when they are being bullied, how do you? What I mean, how do you have that conversation? And I think parents listening to this would be questioning: Okay, how do I do this? I mean, I a lot of them have given their fo- given their children's phones. I mean, that that has happened. But how do, do I, as a parent, now start? How do I tell myself, okay, this is this these are interactions that you shouldn't have. Be 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 wary of this. How do I start start the yeah. conversation? See, MH370. My heart goes out to the. The reason why it got lost is the radar was switched off. Yeah. Similarly, in family, we all have this radar to check and balance. And the radar is to have a conversation. Mm. Look at them, undivided attention given to them. You know that there's change in their body language, the way they talk. They're not giving you eye contact. There's something wrong, right? Then have a conversation. You're not like before, you know, can you share with me? And if they don't want to share, means they're sharing with someone else, mm. right? Who are they sharing with? most probably they're sharing with their friends or somewhere in the social media. Do you think the person at the other end cares to give the right advice? The right person to give the right advice is the family because that's where the value is. Mm. So have that conversation. I'm old book la, because we are dealing with the old machine, right? It's not gone to a tremendous upgrade like chat GBT or whatever. Treat it like that. Have a conversation. Why not 
sit down and have a good meaningful conversation have dinner have that thing celebrate failure celebrate fears and have that conversation why if we're not going to have that conversation how do we know we are going in the right direction it all happens when it's too late someone su- committed suicide yes that's sad right yeah. have conversation that's the only thing they can do mm. in in our coaching we always measure our clients performance uh by the narration see when they meet us in the beginning they have some sort of story to tell but along the way they still have they they won't talk about the old subject they talk about now new problem mm. if they're not talking about the old problem means the old problem has been resolved they're having new problem now so that's how you move the quant in a qualitative way to know that whether you're progressing or not so mm. have conversation and uh set rules you know one problem i think of modern society is that why cyberbullying has become such a big deal sexual exploitation of kids so has rampant I mean, recently there was a case in bukit tinggi where a 12 year old got kidnapped you know i mean as a parent myself i always keep an eye over things like this yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. it's a it's a, it's a different world la, from when i was a child one of the things is that uh, uh we we are living in a me generation yeah. right people are more into individual activities which is why i think online gaming has just become this huge hobby and this it's it's become a culture yes how beneficial is it to engage in activities with people like what we used to do right and i'm and i'm and i'm sounding old by saying this like oh back in our day i know i i i appreciate that but what is the benefit of engaging with people as opposed to being by yourself well lord um when you're engaging with people you have this immediate connection okay and your body works in a very different way now you start having different kind of hormones happening in you now you have this oxytocin that comes to you that makes you to feel good the bondage mm. we don't go out and help people that's why giving is more important more exciting than taking it gives you oxytocin right and then you have dopamine you sit down you have a conversation so we are not we, if you're just getting addicted this dopamine got negative dopamine or positive dopamine the thing is that yes we must have interaction we are a social creature when you stop talking guess what stop living now very important who do you hang around with association is very important because uh you are some average of the five people around that you hang around with yeah. right yeah. that's the thing so who are we hang around with so as parents you must always find out who are your kids hang around hanging around so one of the tip that we gave to our kids is when they shifted school we always say find your dolphin pods because dolphin not like sharks if you swim alone sharks will eat you but if you're swimming with dolphins they protect you So you need to first go to this is a very good advice to give your kids if they're going to a new environment find your dolphins find who can assist you the good type of people because they will start taking you mm. up so these are the people that will actually keep an eye look out for you when they look out for you and you have good people around you guess what happens they protect you but do we have that kind of things we are not even spending time with them mm. we are just gaming gaming and then we are not even having good meaningful relationship we have to have deep meaning conversation like what you said i totally agree we need to spend time do you have to spend time with technology yes you have to spend time with technology but you need to know there's always a time for all mm. you need to divide it and use it properly i mean just just one last point are parents not aware uh, or is there a lack of efforts being done to promote the negative sides of online gaming to parents to stakeholders such as cyberbullying and sexual protection harassment and all that are we doing enough um i think the government is doing some work but personally for parents i don't think so enough end of the day it all starts from the we're talking about kids and all that so parents have to be aware of the changes what's happening and they should be able to have proper conversation and set up the rules needed and the kids need to buy into the rules mm. otherwise it's not going to happen it's a partnership mm. so i i feel more need to be done more awareness to the parents where look out for your kids the kids are here because of you look out they need help the brain is not fully developed this is biology this is what science says right i'm not saying now lastly i just want to get your input on this what advice would you give parents society in general on how to create a fostering environment where children the youth can create a healthy balance between gaming and engaging in other activities um uh, they can have reward systems you know uh, you know they can have this you know when you do this you get this many stars okay you get again dopamine right you get this many stars then you can get to play this game 
then that's healthy rather than just giving you do your some house chores you get this task okay you can go and play this game mm. and i think that falls in line with not giving things very easily because one of the biggest challenge now is that the kids are getting it very easily without them knowing the impact of using the social media so parents need to be the word is they need to create resilience la resilience okay. resilience okay yeah our innate being our innate being is love and compassion why is it being lost along the way mm. why do we blame the technology for me i never blame the technology i tell you why technology is technology knife is knife how are you going to use it what's mm. the motive of it who decides we decide why don't we take some time breathe like cyber bullying i just hit keyboard warrior but if they all can just breathe and say if i'm going to do this what's going to happen to the other person and push the signal from your reptilian to your neocortex where you can actually think i told you is 24 years 26 years that's why you can do your executive decision i don't think so is the right thing to do okay fine i'm not going to hit the button okay i'll go and have a cup of coffee this is what i want reset so what do i want i just move on mm. so if we can all can do that the world be a better place right nice yeah. thank you so much mr siva for joining this thank podcast you, um there you go folks the answer is communication and being more compassionate and being more thoughtful uh thank you mr siva for joining in we really, i really enjoyed talking to you and uh, we encourage parents and stakeholders to implement these strategies uh, to improve the lives of your children and especially while they're gaming so please stay tuned for future episodes where we discuss how online safety meets mental well-being yeah. take care